Hey, it's the footy coach here. Mark Goldbridge called football corrupt yesterday. He's not wrong. In England, it most definitely is. The decisions we are seeing on and off the pitch in recent times are starting to show semblance of that. At its worst, it's unconscious bias, but we're getting to a level that is just too blatant now. And because the idiots in the football media do everything they can to protect their business, Neville, Carragher, Simon Jordan, and they won't call out what is really wrong, this is what it leads to. A bubble created where somehow everything is perfect and no one's integrity can be questioned and football in England is above corruption. 25 years ago, this was the same sentiment in Italy actually. The media constantly protected Juventus until of course, the truth was revealed. The Forest statement yesterday, I fully approve of. Think Forest have been childish in some of their claims this season? But yesterday, no. But we'll come to that in a minute as there's three games that were torched by our excellent officials this weekend. First, Man City beat Chelsea in the FA Cup this weekend. Michael Oliver somehow missed Grealish's handball and didn't even give a corner. Coventry got a penalty for an exactly similar handball. So wait, let's pause. Why is one handball? And the other is not. And then of course yesterday, Forrest should have got three penalties. I don't care about the mental gymnastics that Dermot Gallagher has been performing for his buddies on Sky Sports today. He's a puppet in a circus with a ventriloquist. The guy has no original thought of his own. Before I continue, here's some quotes by Pierre Luigi Colina, the head of the FIFA refs committee. Have a quick read and just think, do you see this being applied in England by the video refs? Right, on to Michael Oliver, who I thought was one of the best referees in the country, but even Keith Hackett noticed something's wrong with the fella. So I look back at games he'd refereed this season, and he's had a major impact on Manchester City games. Kovacic should have been sent off against Arsenal, but somehow got away with it. It was the penalty for City against Everton, with the ball smashed against Anana from one metre away. The Doku foul on McAllister at Anfield, meaning City get a point and Liverpool don't get three. And he was on VAR when the penalty against United for what was a challenge we see at nearly every single game. Yeah, it's something that we've not seen awarded again. And then there's Saturday's non-handball against Jack Grealish. Could go over all of those incidents again, but let's just talk about that handball incident. Lots of people are like, no, it's not handball, I wouldn't give it. The point isn't whether or not it's handball in your opinion. We have to look at the evidence of handballs this season and his, the motion of his hand towards the ball. So why is it handball? Because in the exact same competition a day later, handball was given. In other competitions this season, that handball has been given. That's why it's a handball. Also, Grealish is moving his hand towards the ball. Howard Webb admitted after the Odegaard incident at Anfield, this kind of movement means it's a handball. So why did it not mean the same here? Well, for me, it's very easy. Michael Oliver has refereed in the UAE this season and they want him to do more games there. So I don't think all these incidents going for one club coincidental. Maybe it's unconscious bias or maybe it's just clear. Now let's talk about Forrest's statement. Sorry, all three are penalties in my opinion. I don't really care if they're soft or not. They are penalties going by what has been given this season. Is Stuart Atwell a Luton fan? Well, yes, this is actually quite well documented. You just have to Google to see it. So why is he refereeing a Forest game? You might think, why am I saying this? Because Mr. Michael Oliver did an interview with the Daily Mail where he said this. So the PGMO actually have a policy in place. Stuart Atwell, a Luton fan, should not be refereeing or video assisting games involving teams that are competing with Luton. And why was he there at this game? So Forrest, have a point. Now people keep saying VAR is the issue. It's not. It's the monkeys pulling the levers with the issue. These PGML characters have such big egos. They believe they are above criticism, above reproach. They think what they think is right and everyone else is wrong. That's why Neville, Carragher, Jordan and those guys are all on the attack. Because when you criticize authority, discrediting and smearing the victim is the common defense route. These idiots are the pawns for that. And we've seen that with other clubs this season. Liverpool, Arsenal, Everton, Wolves, whenever they've released statements criticizing the officials, even if they've been given apology after, these attack dogs in the media are on their case straight away instead of criticizing the mistake that was made. They criticize the victims instead. It's like a cult, because this is what happens in cults. Howard Webb, you now he's in charge of all this now, and according to him, he's taken uncertainty out from the system. But 
He's done it in a way where referees don't try to get the right decision. VAR just backs what happens on field. Then he goes on Sky Sports and stands next to some dumb footballer and tells us why we the public don't understand these decisions. That's why those quotes earlier from Kalina are so important because it's about making the right decision, not backing your team, your mates on the pitch. Another point about this cult at PGML is what's happened with Lee Mason. So he was fired last season for making a horrible mistake, which I personally think cost Arsenal the title. I think some people will say mistake, but me, it seemed blatant. Now, what's happened to Lee Mason? Well, his old employer was the PGMO. They fired him. And his new employer is the PGMO. This tells you everything you need to know about these guys. When they make mistakes, they don't actually make mistakes, you see. They are a cult. There's no one overseeing them. These boys, they get fired. They get rehired once the noise has died down. In rugby league, in union, in the NFL, incidents are discussed between the on-field ref and the video ref and they aren't scared to tell the on-field ref that they were wrong and that the decision should be changed hell in rugby we even hear the entire conversation why do they not have problems with technology yet the imbeciles in english football do now nottingham forest will get absolute crap for the next few days from the football establishment just like liverpool did when they complained and like the other clubs i mentioned um liverpool had a clear goal not given to them and when they released a statement instead of the criticism being being on the officials for making such a blatant mistake it was Liverpool who were getting it from the media and that's what will happen to Forrest now and it's wild but it's there to protect the status quo of corruption this happens in any industry or government and it's happening in front of eyes right here right now put the pressure and blame on victims to hide your mistakes and that's English football and that's why it's crap so I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below Please do like and subscribe and as always, thank you for watching.